and that connectivity. And uh, we encourage you to connect with all these people uh, here on the call, of course, uh, but after the words as well in the Facebook group or one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whatever they're open to. So um, during the, your East. So good afternoon, Serena. Hey, how's it going? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good. I just want to warn everybody that my four-year-old is just sitting over here playing a game. Uh, her nice. dad's not with us today, so if she comes and pops in, she'll say hello. <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello. Um, why don't you just start off with sharing a little bit about yourself and um, kind of what got you here today? Sure. Um, so I ran my own business for 18 years, which I sold uh, going back a couple of years ago. And I had a realist or a, a coach, I should say, uh, going back probably 10 or 11 years ago that encouraged me to take some money out of my business to invest with. She's like, you know, the average business owner only operates on three to six months. You have a year and a half. <laughs> like, you know, you can put this to better use. And I ended up buying a short-term rental in Florida for my first uh, rental property. And I bought that when the dollar was at par. So I kept that for four years, you know, learned a lot during that time because everything in the 1100 square foot condo broke, <laughs> which is fun to deal with when you're not there and just dealing with snowbirds and filing U.S. taxes and getting an ITIN number and all of that stuff. And then when I sold that, I didn't really know what to do next. And um, I started staffing an events for an organization um, for some stuff in Texas and Florida. A lot of us would know them. <laughs> so another real estate education platform. And I ended up seeing Darren actually speak at the first event that I went to for them. And you know, it kind of snowballed into uh, going to a big investor summit, buying um, a couple of properties, investing in syndicated mortgages, a land development deal, introduced me into private lending. And that was going really well for a long time. I did about 60 deals in five and a half years. And then wow. just in the last um, six to eight months, everything took a very swift turn, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I think some people here probably know about. So just um, working through some of that stuff. Um, but one of the reasons I joined Synergy was that I was trying to figure out again, what to do next? And did it make sense to go into multifamily joint venture with somebody? Did it make sense to, you know, tackle another short term rental? So part of joining Synergy was to really connect with other members and just try to narrow down and determine what really made sense in terms of what I wanted to do. And through that, since I'm more on the passive side, I've ended up you know, supporting a lot of people more on the active side and just trying to come up with best possible outcomes, make introductions. You know, sometimes that was to do with capital raising. Now a lot of it's to do with um, equity and things like that. So it's just uh, kind of come full circle in a lot of different ways. Amazing. Um, I want to kind of dig into uh, personal branding a little bit because being able to build and build a successful business, style a successful business, and you're also a podcast host as well and that has gone incredibly for you as well so i would imagine that within both of those spheres you've had to learn a thing or two about building an audience and and connection with clients how have you been able to build a really successful strong personal brand over time yeah i mean what's really uh, the dynamic was a little bit different when i had tigress because we always made our staff and our clients kind of front and center like if anything i was always kind of like behind the brand <laughs> in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways and i think i just almost like inherited that quality because when I joined the business, I didn't start it. So the founder was actually the face of the business with staff and clients and stuff like that. And I was more operations and behind the scene to the point that sometimes staff are like, I just want to meet who signs my paycheck. <laughs> like nobody really knew who I was. Like I, I never really came out and, unless it was like a training session and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. over time, um, you know, things kind of evolved there. And I had a mentor that said, you know, no, you need to stop being the account director and people need to know you own the business and you need to be like the president, and the CEO, and people will look at you different, you know, and I started trying to transition in that sense. And then I guess when I sold the company and I, you know, kind of transitioned more into real estate, you have to put yourself a little bit more front and center because it's a very different uh, dynamic with that kind of business, right? Like people want to like, know, and trust you. And I think that's where a lot of those relationships have stemmed from because you can't hide behind a house like what are you gonna do <laughs> so what have you been consistent in in you know being able to be top of mind or you know not hide behind the house what has worked with you over the last couple of years are you seeing different types of trends that are being more successful than others how did you find like the podcast niche into just share a little bit more about like how that journey has gone 
For sure. Um, so I guess it started because I published a book called The Accidental Entrepreneur, which came out at the end of 2021. And after a year, I was like, you know, how do I get more copies sold? And I thought if I start going on other podcasts, then at least I can get in front of other people's audiences. So I did, you know, a whole bunch of podcasts. And once you start going on them, you start getting invited to be on them and stuff like that. So I think I've done I don't know, it's been about 55 in the last, say, 18 to 20 months. And when I was doing that, I actually was doing a podcast with Danielle Chason, who was another fellow Synergy member. And her assistant said, you know, you should really start your own podcast. And it, it was really not on my radar. I wasn't intending to do that. And then, of course, it just came to me, like what the title would be, uh, being inspired to invest and just thinking back to the fact that sometimes people feel like it's really intimidating and elusive and like, how do I become a real estate investor. And I thought it was just inspiring to share the stories of people that I connected with to show like, maybe they're a project manager or stay at home mom, or like, you know, they all have these different backgrounds, but then one day somebody introduced them to somebody, or there was a catalyst to kind of put them on this different trajectory. And I thought it was important to kind of share those stories to, to let people know, like, it's not like you wake up this overnight success and show like more about what that journey was. So I think, um, because I've been more on the private lending passive side, like, I was able to dedicate a lot of time to the podcast and getting it off the ground and just being really consistent with social media and stuff like that. Um, so it's just, I think consistency and, and showing up all the time is a big part of it. Couldn't agree more. I'm curious, like, is there a like anecdotal uh, connection between the consistency in your branding, you know, social, your podcast with business growth? I mean, yes and no. Like, I mean, I think with um, real estate, talking about being like a realtor, like that's more like I need to build up more in my own backyard. Like the irony is that I've lived in the same place for 30 years and I hardly know anybody. <laughs> like I know people <laughs> all across the country and into the United States, but I don't know my neighbors really well. And like, you know, it's a very different dynamic, but I think, um, you know, I'm trying to determine like what the best next path will be for me. And I'm not really sure if being a residential realtor is really like, the right fit for me. Like, I think I'm trying to explore what could be more possible on the commercial side. I'm going to be working with a new organization called the Wealth Club as one of their business and entrepreneurship coaches. So just trying to determine like, you know, what's next. Like I did this, ran this events business for almost 20 years. And, you know, now it's a matter of trying to figure out like having that work-life balance and what makes me happy and what I'm good at and stuff like that. So I'm still trying to like figure out exactly what that will look like, but I'm sure it'll all help in the long run. Mm -hmm. Work-life balance. That's a fun one. <laughs> yeah. Especially with a toddler, I'm assuming. Yeah. And that's just it, right? Like, I mean, priorities shift. You can hear like in the background, <laughs> but um, you know, once upon a time, I didn't mind working evenings and weekends. Now she's like, you have to be on a call for half an hour. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, just so different from back when I used to work like 10 hours and not blink an eye. Right. So it's just a very different pace. And you know, what worked in my twenties and thirties isn't going to work into my forties and beyond. So mm -hmm. I actually want to ask everybody a question. So quickly, like raise your hand if this, uh, hits with you, like, are you currently in a phase of deciding like what's next? Like when maybe that's an asset class, maybe that's, um, a few people. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. A few more people. It's interesting because I think there's like this, this, the last 18 months or last maybe even two years or maybe sitting people more recently, like over the last six months, um, I'm talking to a lot of people who are kind of like in that space of what do I do now? Like maybe acquisitions in, in, in real estate investing isn't as lucrative. You know, maybe there's some skepticism on the, on the Canadian market. Maybe it's just harder to find a really good deal or put the right pieces of the puzzle together. What are you doing to try to like get that clarity that you're looking for? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a very, um, a lot of learning in the last little while. I can't really talk about all of it just due to some legal circumstances and stuff like that. But I think if anything, I've really learned a lot about like the law and due diligence and just never getting too comfortable and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm in almost like damage control moment <laughs> right now, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of real estate investors I was connected with that, you know, they realize that you know, raising money on debt versus equity is not sustainable. It's not really the right way to do it. And a lot of people I think are feeling the consequences of that. I think there's, um, you know, a lot of people that didn't expect, you know, CMHC changing the rules all the time. And like, you know, yes, the housing market is changing, but there's all these things that like, if you're planning 
one way, like, how do you come back from that if they just change the rules with no lead time and no, um, no way to kind of plan for it, right? So I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of people that are just trying to figure out if they're cut out for it, if this is making them happy. And, you know, some people probably kept cards close to their chest for too long and probably could have like found other solutions a lot sooner. And I think that's one thing that's been frustrating on the passive side that like, we're all kind of dealing with that now, but, you know, I think there were signs going back a year or two years ago, like, you know, we should be probably looking at some different things and um, that didn't happen in some instances. So do you have an inkling of like what direction you're going to go into in the future? Like once you get past this bit of season, is there something that yeah, you're I mean, feeling called to? I um, found that just by going on different podcasts and stuff, a lot of people are reaching out to me looking for investment opportunities and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, it would make sense that I get my license to be a dealing representative for an exempt market dealer. And that's actually been a lot harder than I expected it to be because there's just a few things I wasn't expecting in the course, like hedge funds and oil and gas and a lot of calculations and just like not a math person. So it's proven to be a more challenging program than I ever expected to be. Like, you know, the real estate program was like a breeze in comparison. <laughs> it was a lot longer, <laughs> but this is like, you know, seems like a short little course. It's been quite challenging. So I'm trying to tackle that. And like I said, I think just, um, I never thought of coaching or anything like that, but the opportunity just presented itself. And I guess we'll see how that goes. And that could lead to kind of some different things. Cause I think I can share based on 20 years experience and a lot of the things that I wish I'd known sooner. And like, maybe things could have been different. Had you known this five or 10 years ahead of time. Right. So just trying to pass along some of that wisdom. What's a nugget of that wisdom you can share right now. Uh, with entrepreneurship. Sure. I think like um, you guys probably saw like Marcin is my podcast guest this week and I loved he was kind of quoting something from Pace Morby and he's talking about like the cost of lost opportunity and you know it's mm -hmm. worth it to pay to accelerate learning in six months and it could take five years or something like that right so I think just getting you don't know what you don't know and just trying to get someone to look at your business objectively is helpful and I did a, a mentorship exchange in 2014 and I was matched with a marketing consultant that gave me eight hours he deconstructed my whole business every component, like finance, branding, like every last little bit. And we had an action plan for 10 months. And every month I had very specific things that I had to have achieved and stuff like that. But imagine you did that in year one or year two, not like 10 years in, right? And how much further ahead you could possibly be if you got that kind of um, insight and mentorship and stuff like that, right? So I think we're so used to just like doing a bit of everything and winging it. Um, but even like Dan Martel, like when, when he was on as our expert speaker, he talked about that too, right? Just how you have to set things up in terms of structure so that you can scale and you can grow and you're not really just wasting time. I think that's been one of my biggest lessons over the last number of years is the lessons learned in how not to build in the right direction because you don't know what you don't know. And then when you get that business structure set up in the right way, uh, I'm not going to say things get easier, but I think it's just easier to be able to like get out of your own way. If that makes sense. Yeah. You said something about a minute ago and I've basically just got two more questions for you. Um, and it was something along the lines of like being an entrepreneur challenges you. Um, has there been like a direct connection uh, or maybe an experience that you can share about how personal growth has just been tied to entrepreneurship or, or real estate? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it's like one specific thing necessarily. Like I feel like my background was almost a little bit scrappy in the sense that I didn't have a family I could completely depend on. Like, it's not like I was homeless or something, but I did bounce around. My parents had split up and I went from different family members and even an aunt and uncle and stuff like that. And, you know, you feel bad enough, just they're putting food on the table. So like I was trying to get a job when I was, before I was in, legally employable, <laughs> you know, like just trying to do things. And I always had like three and four different jobs and stuff like that. And I think I just, um, yeah, I just, it, I was always a yes person and just trying to help people in different ways. So I think it just kind of ended up going down that path. And, um, I don't know if that's necessarily an entrepreneurship quality, but it's just like you say yes to opportunities and sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't, but, you know, I've just always tried to help as many people as I can. And it's taken different shapes and forms. Mm -hmm. uh, last question for you is just like, what are you excited about in the future? What's something that you're, um, you know, you're, you're excited about finding or, you know, committing to, or, you know, you said 
lifting other people up like um what's your heart speaking towards right now yeah like I said I think the last six months has been a, a very very big challenge I know there's some people on here that are feeling that too so I'm really excited to just get through that and <laughs> like you know not have to have calls with like lawyers every day and you know I called to a call with one of our lawyers and you know just kind of going through all of those challenges and stuff right and I know that things ebb and flow but I think um it's been a very, very tedious and challenging time in a way that I don't think anyone could have expected. So I, I just can't wait to see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> like that's <laughs> really the next thing. And in the meantime, like everything's happening, life is still happening. You know, you try to still enjoy things and just compartmentalize that stuff as much as you can. But um, yeah, I really just can't wait to get through some of this stuff. Yeah, I feel you. Um, Serena, thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing some wisdom. Uh, if people want to learn more from you or connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Yes. Uh, so I guess on Instagram, there's Inspired to Invest podcast or uh, Serena Holmes Realtor. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Looking forward to, uh, to pull, helping you get pulled out of that, uh, that tunnel as well so you can see <laughs> the light of it. Um, and looking forward to a great year and following along with the podcast as well. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Um, great job. If you haven't listened to Serena's podcast, uh, you're missing out. So maybe even Serena, can you just toss the link into the Zoom chat too? Uh, so we can make it easy for people or Drew, uh, whoever, whoever gets it first. Um, Drew, for anybody who doesn't know, is our Synergy Ops Manager. Uh, so 